Okay, I wanted to put a video together quickly to help review uh, for the upcoming quiz 1.1 through 1.3, the uh, quiz covering limits. And remember, we have three different ways we're going to talk about with limits, but this quiz is pretty much going to talk about graphically, uh, which means we're just going to look at a picture. And analytically, remember, we're going to use some kind of uh, algebra to help us when we're going to study limits. So the first one I'm going to show you is graphically. I have a picture here. And just similar, we're going to have a picture like this on our quiz uh, where we have to interpret uh, different parts of the graph. So the first part here, this is just function notation. So everything right here, these are just, I'm asking, all I'm asking are the points on the graph. So f of 0. So I'm going to look at the x value is 0, and I can see the y value is 1 for this one. f of 5, so I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I'm going to see that all the way up here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. f of 5 is going to be 11, and then 8 is going to be right here where the solid dot is, and that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 8, 5 is on there. I'm not going to use this one up here because that's the open circle. And then 11, a, this is 8, 9, 10, 11, and then all the way up to the top of that, that uh, parabola. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 11, 12. So those are just finding points on the graph. Now we're going to look at the, the calculus part here is finding the limits here. So what happens as we're approaching 2? Well, here's the x value of 2. And I'm looking right in here. And remember, I'm going to follow from the right side and from the left side. So are your fingers coming together when you're, when you're tracing along the graph? And they are. And then you've got to tell me the y value that they're coming together at. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This says we approach 2. The y value is 5 for this one. And then I want to see what happens as I approach 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is right in here. Now, if I follow along the right side, I get a y value of 1, 2, 3, 4. I get a y value of 5. And if I'm following from the left side, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I get a value of 11. So since I'm not approaching the same y value from each side, this one we write down as DNE does not exist because I'm approaching a different y value from each side. I'll actually see the same thing for 8. If I follow from the left side, I, again, I get, a, I get a y value of about 5. And on the right side, I get a y value of about, about 7.5. Those are not the same as well. This one is a DNE as well for this. And then the limit as x approaches 11, well, here's 11 way up here. And then if I'm looking at as I approach from the right and from the left, my fingers are coming together. This one's coming together at the y value of 12. So you'll have a picture similar to this uh, that where you have to interpret with points and with uh, limits here to see what you're approaching. Remember that undefined cannot be an answer for a limit, only DNE. Undefined would be a, an answer up for points if there was no solid dot. So... After the graphical interpretation, let's look at an analytical interpretation in terms of how to use some algebra to solve for limits. So we know that if we plug in 4 right now by direct substitution, we would wind up with an indeterminate form of 0 over 0, and that's no good. So we have to do some sort of factoring. That's what analytical means. So if I take x minus 4 on the top, and I know the bottom is x minus 4, and x plus 4 because it's a difference of squares, I know that the x minus 4's will cancel, and I'll be left with 1 over x plus 4. And now I can do direct substitution by plugging in 4, and 1 over x plus 4, I mean 1 over 4 plus 4, and I'll have a limit of 1 eighth. For the one down here, we talked about in class as being able to multiply by the conjugate because once again if I try to plug in 0 we always try, try direct substitution first. If I plug in 0 I'll wind up with 0 over 0 again. So I want to try to multiply by the conjugate. So I'm going to write down the square root of x plus 1 
and then plus 1 on the top and bottom. So this is the conjugate. And then remember, when I multiply by conjugates, I only need to worry about the first and the last terms because they'll cancel in the middle. Radical x plus 1 times radical x plus 1 is just x plus 1. And then negative 1 times positive 1 is a negative 1. And remember what we talked about. We do not write or distribute anything. You just leave the bottoms alone. It's x times the square root of x plus 1 plus 1. And we'll see things cancel, like the plus 1 and the minus 1 cancel. Then the x on the top and the x on the bottom cancel. We'll be left with 1 over square root of x plus 1 plus 1. And then now, direct substitution-wise, I'll have 1 over square root of 0 plus 1 plus 1 on the outside, which will wind up giving me 1 half for my answer for my limit for that one. So the first one was factoring. The second one was multiplying by a conjugate. Then we have the special trig limit here as we approach 0. Now to make sure that it's approaching 0, we have to make sure that these are the same. Well, they're not the same. So what am I going to do to make sure that they are the same? I am going to introduce a 9 to the bottom and to the top. By doing that, okay, by doing that, I now have the property that says as long as these are the same, this will actually just be wind up 9 times the 1, and we'll get 9 for an answer for our limit for that one. So there was three examples of doing some analytical work or some algebraic work to solve for limits. Um, another type of analytical problem that we're going to look at is where I've given you the answers and you have to figure out the rest here so it says given the following that the limit of f of x is negative 2 the limit of g of x is 1 half and the limit of h of x is 4 so what is the limit of 6 times g of x and by properties I just find out g of x was 1 half so this just winds up being 6 times a half and I'll wind up with 3 for an answer there h of x times g of x, well that's 4 times a half, so I wind up with 4 times a half, so half of 4, and this will wind up being 2, and then f of x divided by h of x, f of x was negative 2, h of x was 4, and this one will wind up being negative 1 half. So there will be a section on your quiz there as well where I give you the following limit answers and you have to apply whatever property I've asked for you. So there's a very, very quick review um, for our quiz, sections 1.1 through 1.3.